Not everyone will know the name Hank Garrett, but TV viewers of the 60s will likely recognize him when they see him. After an early career as a wrestler, the character actor made a name for himself in a variety of roles on both film and TV. He was featured most prominently as Officer Nicholson in the television show Car 54 Where Are You? The 1960s police sitcom turned Hank into a notable force in the entertainment industry, and he used that success to garner an incredibly fulfilling life. However, his life certainly hasn't been without its hardships. Hank worked incredibly hard to get to where he is today, and arguably deserves more recognition. Join Facts First as Hank Garrett reveals a deeply troubled life. Hank Garrett was born Henry Greenberg Cohen Sandler Weinblatt on October 26, 1931. He was born in Harlem, New York City, to two Jewish-Russian immigrants by the name of Sam and Ida Greenberg. The environment of Harlem was an oppressive force on Hank from a young age, inspiring him to begin powerlifting at age 13. Soon he was a full-blown practitioner of bodybuilding and martial arts, with enough skills and muscle to protect himself on the tough streets of Harlem. Despite his success at toughening up, fighting on the streets of Harlem wasn't what Hank's parents wanted for the young man. Thankfully, Ida had some connections that would prove beneficial in helping steer Hank on the straight and narrow path. Despite 1940s Harlem being a terrible time and place for crime, it was also a great time and place for jazz music. Ida was a friend of Willie Bryant, a popular jazz band leader that has been colloquially referred to as the mayor of Harlem. Ida asked a request of her friend to help give Hank something to do that could keep him off the streets. Willie agreed and took Hank with him one afternoon to the Apollo Theater, a popular theater in Harlem. Sam and Ida dedicated all their time to selling fruits and vegetables from their pushcart, leaving them little time to hold influence over young Hank's life. For this reason, Ida hoped Willie could prove to be a more available role model. Thankfully, Willie was up to the task, but he had some help from his good friend Sammy Davis Jr. Upon Hank's arrival at the Apollo Theater, Willie took him to a dressing room and introduced him to Sammy himself. Sammy gave Hank a stern talking to about what it meant to be a tough guy on the streets of Harlem, asking Hank whether or not that was the life he wanted. Sammy struck a chord with Hank and successfully convinced the boy to give a life of hard work a try. Willie gave young Hank a job as a band boy, meaning he was tasked with setting up the music stands for the musicians performing. Being in the art scene gave Hank a taste for performance himself, and he soon became interested in stand-up comedy. He began practicing and honing his craft. However, a different career path was soon going to appear in the form of professional wrestling. In 1958, Hank won the Junior Olympic Powerlifting Competition. Using this notoriety, he developed a prominent wrestling career under the name of the Minnesota Farm Boy. Late in his career, he fought a young Jimmy Snuka. Hank was inducted into the Professional Wrestling Hall of Fame in 2009, although his success as a wrestler was only one of his many accomplishments. Despite Hank's apparent success through the 50s, the decade wasn't all a walk in the park. It saw him get into a car accident that left him gravely injured. Emergency responders believed Hank wasn't going to live. When he survived, it was believed he wouldn't ever walk again. Miraculously, he made a full recovery and was able to continue with his pro wrestling career. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. After calling it quits on the pro wrestling scene, numerous odd jobs followed for Hank Garrett before he ended up finding his way in front of the camera. He served as an officer on the New York police force for a time being, before eventually being chosen to play a character on the American police sitcom Car 54 Where Are You? Car 54 Where Are You? aired from 1961 to 63 and featured Hank as a memorable supporting character Officer Nicholson. From here, Hank was able to secure a number of other smaller guest roles on other shows. He was featured in a wide variety, including The Dukes of Hazard, Three's Company, Knight Rider, Columbo, and Dragnet. He also provided voice talent in cartoons like G.I. Joe and Garfield. When it came to his film career, Hank has never had quite as much luck as on TV. But that doesn't mean he hasn't had a fair share of success in cinema, including some memorable on-set incidents with some beloved stars. Hank was featured in films like Death Wish alongside Charles Bronson and Serpico alongside Al Pacino, but his most memorable film role is arguably in the Robert Redford vehicle Three Days of the Condor. Not only was Hank's performance in the film memorable, but it also inspired a memorable incident on set alongside Robert himself. Hank played a hitman that attacked Robert Redford's character. 
Hank took the role so seriously, he accidentally gave Redford a bloody nose. When Hank got the news that Redford's nose was broken, he was prepared to be fired. But the forgiving Robert was simply thankful Hank had put so much effort into the performance. According to Redford, it was one of the greatest action scenes he'd ever filmed. Hank also got the chance to work with a number of other Hollywood legends over the course of his career. He's worked with James Earl Jones, Faye Dunaway, Sophia Loren, Christopher Lloyd, Patrick Stewart, and many others. He got the chance to spar with Elvis Presley after a fellow comedian revealed to the singer that Hank was a black belt. Given that Elvis was a black belt himself, he jumped at the chance to test his skills. The two sparred amicably, and Hank has always expressed that Elvis was one of the best fighters he has gone against. Sadly, Elvis never took it upon himself to hire Hank as an antagonist in one of his own feature films. Hank did some work as a bodyguard during the 50s, and one night he was tasked with escorting none other than Audrey Hepburn. He chaperoned her out to a club. Upon arrival, he expected to have to wait with the rest of the help. However, Audrey insisted Hank stay by her side for dinner. He sat by her the whole night and has recalled he was smiling the entire evening. Nowadays, Hank continues to practice his comedy, which he hasn't stopped doing since he was a teen. Currently, he's working on a one-man show. He's been married three times over the course of his life. His first wife was a woman named Agnes DeAngelis. They were married from 1963 to 79. Years later, Hank married Linda de Blasio, and they stayed married from 1982 until 2008. He's now married to his third wife, Deanna Marie Smith. With the right breakout role, Hank could have potentially been an action star in the same vein as Charles Bronson or Chuck Norris. But things never worked out that way. Still, he's fondly regarded for the many roles he's performed, and fans still know he's one of the most authentic tough guys to ever have graced the screen. He's developed such a reputation for being a tough guy, he's even been given his own tough guy fragrance by CBT Candle Los Angeles. The company sells an exclusive fragrance that's endorsed by Hank himself featuring a scent that will make you smell just like the legendary action star. According to the website, Hank has a woody aroma reminiscent of sandalwood, basil, and ginger. Now it's time to hear from you. Comment down below to share if you remember Hank from Car 54 Where Are You? Or if you were surprised to learn that the actor was capable of holding his own in a black belt showdown against Elvis. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.